Welcome to GatorZone.com. I'm Chris Harry alongside Scott Carter. And much has changed since we visited with you guys last time from here in the Heavener Complex. The Gators, in defeating Tennessee last week, 31 to 17, lost starting quarterback Jeff Driscoll to a season-ending leg injury and lost starting defensive tackle Dominic Easley Tuesday night in the last play of practice to a season-ending knee injury. Scott, what can the Gators expect going up to Lexington for their first SEC road game of the season? Well, we're going to see how resilient they are. I mean, that's two key injuries to overcome for any team, especially a, a team this early in the season that was still kind of, uh, you know, finding its footing uh, after the Miami loss. They came back and had a nice win against Tennessee. But, you know, Tyler Murphy looked good in the first game, but this Dominic Easley injury, I mean, it throws a wrinkle into the defense. He was playing exceptionally well. Uh, you know, one of the obviously top defensive tackles in the country, a key leader on that defense, a vocal leader. So you're going to have to look for some younger guys to step into that role and uh, see what they can do because the Gators, they don't, I mean, they don't get any time off. They play uh, a couple days after the injury. Okay, Florida is uh, one of the best defenses in the country, obviously, giving up about 220 yards a game and only 55 yards rushing. Who are some of these guys who can step in? And is it going to be more like a by committee kind of thing taking place for easily? Yeah, I think you'll see, you know, several players. I don't know if there's one guy who will, who will fill that role. But, you know, on the depth chart, Darius Cummings uh, was next in line behind Easley. He's a uh, transfer uh, into the program, a junior. Started his career at Florida State, played at a junior college in Mississippi uh, last year. And we saw him in the first two games. He obviously had the big interception uh, return against Tennessee that uh, made YouTube. And, uh, you know, he's a guy, a big space eater inside, 309 pounds, around 6'1". So he's a veteran guy, they'll rely on him. You know, there, there's probably going to be some mixing and matching with guys. I mean, maybe they move Jonathan Bullard inside, move Fowler around, Ronald Powell maybe into the buck. Young guys, uh, Jaynard Boswick has been mentioned, Joey Ivey. Uh, Leon Orr and Damian Jacobs at the nose guard position, they're going to look for more from those guys. You know, they're going to have to pick up their play right there where, you know, playing next to where Easley was. So, I mean, there's a lot of guys that they'll challenge uh, to, you know, get some of the production that they're losing with Easley. Back to the offensive side of the ball, obviously we got a preview from what to expect, the kind of game Tyler Murphy has in replacing Jeff Driscoll last week. Passed for 134 yards, ran for 84 on 10 carries. Now they've had a whole week to kind of work with Tyler Murphy as the starting quarterback. How will the Gator offense look differently with Murphy under center? Yeah, I don't think you're going to see a wholesale changes, but you know, in talking to Brent Peace, the offensive coordinator this week, I mean, they will, you know, tailor the offense somewhere around him. You know, maybe some short passes. Obviously, he's a good runner or a good passer on the run. We saw that against Tennessee, and you know, I think the most, the biggest thing I was impressed was by was just his composure. I mean, he really came in and just seen the natural fit in what they were trying to do offensively. So I think you'll see some of that, and they're still trying to get the running game going more. But Matt Jones and, you know, still getting healthy. Matt Brown's done a good job. I know they want to see more from Matt, uh, Matt Jones. And, uh, you know, so that would obviously help out the transition with uh, Murphy. I was a prep reporter covering high schools for the Tampa Tribune the last time the Gators lost to the University of Kentucky. That was in November of 1986. It's a long losing streak of 26 games. You know, uh, what's the challenge going up there in the Commonwealth Stadium this week and kind of dealing with that pressure? Yeah, I mean, there are obviously, you know, there's some different faces in the lineup they'll be dealing with. But also, Kentucky's a program that's kind of recharged with first-year coach Mark Stoops. He's a guy who was at Florida State as defensive coordinator last year. So he's familiar with Florida and some of the things they like to do offensively. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, an SEC opener up there on the road, I mean, there's going to be a, a buzz in the crowd there at Commonwealth Stadium. Anytime a team comes in that you haven't beaten in a quarter of a century. I mean, they're all wanting to see that streak in. The Gators don't want it to end. And, uh, you know, they're going to have to go up there and, and execute and play uh, with some key uh, missing parts to get that number 27 in a row. And we'll see how Tyler Murphy performs in his first career start. For Scott Carter, I'm Chris Harry. Stay with Gator Zone and Gator Vision for all our coverage after the game. Thanks.